I think we can all agree that electric vehicles are the way of the future, right? In the United States alone, electric vehicle sales have climbed by more than 40% a year since 2016. And by 2025, it is estimated that over 20% of all new cars sold worldwide will be electric. But one of the biggest challenges in the development of electric vehicles is, yep, you guessed it, their batteries. The management of these high-voltage batteries will be critical to the success of electric vehicles going forward. But what about wireless battery management? Could that help us solve our electric car battery management woes? Oh yes, it can. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Effective battery management for electric vehicles is a critical design element faced by engineers today. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Marco Castellanos from Infineon and I investigate the key functions of battery management for electric vehicles. We also take a closer look at the role that cell balancing, voltage measurement, and temperature measurement play in battery management ICs, and how wireless battery management using Bluetooth low energy can help you tackle a variety of battery management challenges for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Marco. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, good afternoon. So, Marco, where does battery management fit in a battery electric vehicle? Battery management is one of three electronic systems in a battery electric vehicle powertrain. Battery management systems enable lithium ion car batteries to have longer battery lifetimes to optimize charging, discharging, and to operate safely under all conditions. They work in tandem and communicate constantly with other components and other systems in the electric vehicle powertrain, such as the onboard charger, which takes the AC current from the electric grid and transforms it into DC to charge the battery, and the main inverter, which is the system that transforms the DC from the battery into AC for the electric motor that drives the car. Fantastic. So, Marco, what are we really talking about when it comes to a battery for an electrical vehicle? What is it made of? The battery in an electric vehicle will be typically at the bottom. It's called a skateboard platform, so it's under the passenger compartment of the vehicle. The battery itself is made of several battery modules, as you can see here. The battery modules can go between 8 and over 20 of those. Each of them has several battery cells, and the battery cells can be either in a cylindrical format or a pouch format or prismatic or rectangular. A battery management system, what you see there, is going to be the electronics that control the battery itself. You see on this picture different small black boxes connected by wires. That is going to be the battery management system. So what kind of functions are included in this kind of battery management system? What does a battery management system do? Battery management is a key function in a car. It fulfills several roles, such as protecting the battery cells so that they don't overheat or overcharge or over discharge. And when you have any battery, your car will tell you what percentage of charge it is at. The state of charge is calculated based on the voltage of the battery. And that is estimated through an algorithm. The battery management system does that. The state of health is another key metric that estimates the remaining useful lifetime of the battery. Other functions of the battery management systems will include cell balancing to make sure that there are no cells that are more charged than others. Security, making sure that there are no issues, that the batteries are authentic. And controlling charging and discharging. So talking with the uh, onboard charger that I mentioned previously and with the inverter. So how are these systems put together, Marco? 
What are we looking at when it comes to the architecture of a battery management system? Yeah, so a battery management system will be made of different electronic components. The main one that defines a battery management system is the cell sensing, balancing, and monitoring integrated circuit that you can see on the right-hand side here directly connected to the battery pack. The function of this is to measure the voltage, measure temperatures around battery cells, and balance them out to make sure that no cell is charged over the others. These cell balancing and monitoring ICs talk to each other and communicate back to a main battery management unit through an isolated communication UART protocol. This isolated communication protocol then is translated through a transceiver in yellow to the main battery management unit, which includes a microcontroller, in this case a 32-bit microcontroller that has to have high functional safety requirements, and a power supply and a transceiver to talk to the rest of the vehicle. So Marco, earlier you mentioned cell monitoring. Can we take a closer look at that aspect? Cell monitoring and balancing is one of the main functions of a battery management system and is performed by those cell balancing and monitoring ICs, also known as battery management ICs. A battery module can be made of up to dozens of battery cells, and the cells can have different temperatures and different voltages. Those have to be measured, and the battery management IC will do that. Another function of a battery management IC is to measure and balance cells. So the cell voltages can become unbalanced, either because of manufacturing differences or over lifetime, there can be different operating conditions. Some cells within a module might have had higher temperatures than others, and that will affect their aging patterns. And so they get out of balance. And when cells get out of balance, you run the risk of having one of them charge too much or discharge too much. And that can lead to overheating and a lot of issues over the battery lifetime. So to avoid that, what it will do, it will slightly discharge the most out of balance cells to even out the overall charge across a battery pack. So what do you think are the most important aspects of this cell monitoring and balancing? As we discussed, the battery management IC has several key functions, voltage measurement, temperature measurement, communications to the main battery unit, and cell balancing. And in each of these, you've got important requirements. For voltage, it's very important to measure the, all the voltages at exactly the same time if you want to have an accurate picture of the state of charge of the whole battery. And accurate not only over a short period of time, but over the entire lifetime of the vehicle and over wide ranges of temperatures because temperature will impact the readings on voltage. It's important to filter out noise. There can be a lot of RF noise in the battery environment. And it's important also to have good diagnostics. Temperature measurement is also important and has to be very accurate. Communication back to the main battery management unit is also crucial, especially in the noisy RF environment of a battery. So it's important that the communication be very robust. Make sure that the message that is sent by the battery management IC is the same one that is received by the main battery management unit and have a fail-safe mechanism in case of wire failures. Finally, cell balancing. This is one of the most important functions of the battery management IC, and it will typically follow the directions of the main battery management microcontroller. However, it is also important that it be able to independently balance the batteries when the microcontroller is in sleep mode, for example. And it is also important to be able to do that with the minimal amount of external components. So I know that overcurrent detection is extremely important in these types of designs. How can we protect against short circuits, Marco? Right. You have to monitor not just the voltages and the temperature, but also the current. And in particular, if there is a short circuit, you will have very fast rise 
of the current going through the battery and the bus bars. It is crucial to detect that as fast as possible. So to do that, some of the key requirements are a very accurate sensor with a low error that will not degrade over lifetime or over high and low temperatures. It's important to be able to detect very high currents over 2000 amps without having saturation or without damaging the components. It's important that the detection be extremely fast because a short circuit can melt the wires or the bus bars in a battery or around the vehicle. So extremely fast detection, ideally under one microsecond, is best. And you need to have high functional safety. Make sure that this component does not fail. To do that, Infineon offers a coreless current sensor, the TLE4972, which is based on Hall technology. And this allows for very fast overcurrent detection and accuracy over lifetime while being ASLB compliant. So what about the control and monitoring of the battery? What would you suggest here? The battery management system's brain is the microcontroller that is the main battery management unit. Typically, this will be a 32-bit microcontroller with integrated memory and peripherals. It needs a very high performance against errors and failures over a long lifetime, over a decade, and over wide temperature ranges. It needs to be able to control the battery management system when the vehicle is on and off. So it needs to have standby control and low power modes so that it can be turned on without depleting the battery when the car is parked for extended periods of time. It needs the highest level of functional safety, ASLD, to protect against malicious interference, but also make sure that someone doesn't replace the battery modules with counterfeit battery modules or just battery modules from the same manufacturer, but from a different vehicle, because that can mess up the whole system. The microcontroller itself has to be able to detect those things and prevent these security failures, which can cascade into safety failures. Infineon offers the uh, Oryx TC3 family of microcontrollers with ASLD capability, high cybersecurity, Avita high HSM, a standby controller, and high performance with a variety of embedded flash sizes. So Marco, do all battery management systems look like this or are there different types of BMS architectures? Good question. There's actually several architectures for battery management and one of the up and coming ones is wireless communications within a battery pack. So the difference here between the previous architecture that I talked about and this one is going to be reducing the number of cables and having each battery module be semi-autonomous and communicate wirelessly to the central battery management unit. This allows to reduce quite significantly the amount of cables, make assembly easier, and perhaps automate assembly further, and can also help with second life use cases. For example, if you have a battery module that has its own wireless connection to the world, you could take that module and put it in a battery pack in your house for when you have a blackout. It makes things easier if you've got a wireless connection. You don't have to worry about compatibility and communication protocols. The rest of the architecture will be unchanged. You still have a main battery management unit with a microcontroller, its power supply, and its CAN transceiver to the rest of the vehicle. And you still have the cell balancing and monitoring ICs. You can even have several of them connected together talking to a single Bluetooth transceiver. But the main ring topology and isolated communications that we saw before are gone and replaced by wireless. Infineon offers a solution using Bluetooth low energy. So can we take a closer look at the components involved here? Sure. This new component that I highlighted there is a Bluetooth low energy transceiver or radio device. Infineon offers the CYW89820 automotive grade BLE radio, which includes its 
own Bluetooth core, an integrated microcontroller with flash and RAM integrated, and an ARM Cortex-M4, and a variety of peripherals, including security to encrypt communications over Bluetooth, connections to external devices. And since it is Bluetooth low energy, it has very low power modes and does not burden the battery of the car. Infineon has a very long history and has benchmark performance in the Bluetooth low energy sector. And this is a high volume device that goes into many other systems in a car, such as keyless entry or infotainment. So what kind of network topology are we looking at here? Can you explain that aspect a bit more? So different types of network topologies exist. Perhaps the most basic one is going to be a star network where you have one central node and many peripheral nodes or end nodes that is the most efficient setup that will enable the fastest transfer of data the highest bandwidth utilization this is the ideal scenario however unfortunately in many circumstances you can't directly have a connection between the central node and every end node so that's where mesh networks come in And here you can see the Bluetooth low energy mesh that has been developed by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group or the Bluetooth SIG. This is a network that can connect any node to any other node. So you can jump from a node that is far out through a secondary node or even through several hops to the central node in the middle and transfer that data. The issue with this is that, of course, it takes up more bandwidth and there are other limitations that make it less efficient in transferring data. So what we at Infineon did is we took the uh, Bluetooth low energy mesh and we tried to combine it with some of the best aspects of the star network topology. So whenever possible, we have a direct connection to the central node and any node that is not reachable directly by the central node will have one hop, but it also has the ability to self-heal. So if any connection is lost, that node will try to reestablish connection to the central node through another hop. This enables optimal performance while also allowing for flexibility in the network. So, Marco, when it comes to these kinds of wireless battery management systems, what kind of problems and solutions should we be considering? Yeah, so one thing that you might immediately think of when you think of wireless network is, can't that have noise, have interferences, or maybe someone try to jam that? And yes, those are real concerns. The wireless battery management system has to be very robust against noise and against issues of reliability or people trying to jam that network. You would not want someone to drive by with a Bluetooth or RF jammer and disable your wireless battery management system. Now, this is solved in a variety of ways. Of course, the fact that the battery is contained in a metal pack protects against a lot of RF noise, so that will help a lot. However, within the battery pack itself, you do have a lot of electric currents going around, which causes its own noise, so that has to be dealt with, and those can be dealt with through the usual methods in Bluetooth. Another concern that some manufacturers have expressed is the additional cost. Now, it is true that you are adding components in there, right? In the typical wired architecture, you only have one battery management IC per module, and now you're adding a wireless chip to that for every wireless module. And that is true. You have, on the face of it, it looks more expensive. However, you also have to take into account that you're saving a lot on wires. The wire harness in a vehicle is a very expensive and cumbersome components. You also get benefits in terms of easier manufacturing and reuse that I mentioned before, so that some manufacturers feel that that offsets the additional cost of components. In terms of reliability and safety of the wireless communications channel, the use of black channel communications enables a similar solution to a wired battery management system to make sure that the 
data that is sent by the battery management ICs remains the same and is received intact by the main battery management unit. And finally, synchronization. I mentioned before how important it is that the voltages are measured at the exact same time across the battery. Well, it turns out that Bluetooth Low Energy has a mechanism for synchronizing precisely the clocks of all the different Bluetooth radios across the network. So that timing mechanism allows for a very high degree of synchronization between all the modules for simultaneous measurements of the voltage. While there are definitely some challenges with wireless BMS, some manufacturers deem it worth it. Right now on the road, the General Motors Hummer electric vehicle has a version of wireless battery management. So definitely something to look out for in the future. So Marco, if my audience is interested in using a wireless battery management system for their next design, where should they start? We at Infineon have developed a reference design of a wireless battery management system. You can see it here. It includes our Bluetooth Low Energy CYW89820 Bluetooth devices and our TLE9012 DQU battery management IC. We have tested it with multiple nodes and you can order these devices from us or from our distributors. We're ready to help you and support you in your development project. All right, so to recap, Marco, what are the biggest benefits of a battery management system for a battery electric vehicle? So all electric vehicles need a battery management system. This is what enables them to use that battery to its fullest potential and have the most range, the longest lifetime, and the safest operation to uh, keep the driver and the passengers safe at all times. And we at Infineon have developed a very robust battery management solution, not just with battery management and wireless chipset, but also microcontrollers, current sensors, power supplies, transceivers, and more. All right. Well, Marco, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. It was great talking with you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.